Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, I am Sam and I make videos about autism and neurodiversity every single week. So if you like that kind of content, click subscribe and hit the bell notification so you get notified when I do upload a new video. Today I'm going to be doing a Q&A with the help of my good friend Storm over here. Now if you do have a question that you want to ask me for next time, you can either put a comment down below or if you go over to Instagram and follow me, I am at yo Sandy Sam. I will put the questions and answers box in my Instagram stories so you can ask me there as well. So first question, what benefits have you been encountering from being open about your autism diagnosis and how do you deal innerly with the negative ones? Being open about my autism diagnosis it was not something that I really thought about very much. It just seemed kind of obvious that that's how I would do it because I'm kind of a straightforward person in general. Because I've been so open to people, I feel like it's opened the door for me to be a bit more um, sharing with my thoughts and feelings. I don't normally share a lot of feelings unless I feel very, very close to someone or unless I really trust someone. The fact that I have a diagnosis almost gave me permission to talk to people more and tell people I'm struggling. So I found that that was, that has been um, quite a, a useful one. It's also very useful to be able to use the autism word. And I don't mean like using it as an excuse, but just, it's kind of a powerful word to use when you are in a stressful situation or something. And you can explain to people exactly uh, why you're acting the way you are or why you feel like this or something because of my autism. For me this has also been more powerful especially because I kind of look like a normie I guess. You know like no one said this to me but I'm the stereotypical you don't look autistic girl right? Although now I have purple hair I feel like I'm starting to let my little freak flag fly a little bit. So that's been sort of like real life and online it's really just opened up avenues to friendships I guess and opened up conversations with people and of course being open online on my YouTube channel about my autism and about my struggles has meant that I have been connected to so many people who said who say nice things like I feel exactly like you I I no one's ever Articulate. I can't even articulate when I'm saying I'm articulating it. I no one's ever articulated the way that you do. Um, so that that's been really really nice. I mean, I do these videos because I want to help people, but I also um, it's kind of like been a bit of a therapy for me because um, I sort of get validation from people that I'm not alone. Um, so how do I deal with the negative stuff? Well, typically I sort of take the playing back the conversation in my head over and over again approach until I've come up with enough mental comebacks to have sufficient, sufficiently um, eviscerated the person. Um, honestly, I haven't received too much negativity since diagnosis. I have been very busy and kind of like a hermit as well. So there has been also a side of that that, you know, I guess I've just been lucky and I've surrounded myself by the right people and the people who weren't the right people have kind of already dropped out of my life, I guess. So yeah, I hope that answered the question. So next question, doesn't it scare you the idea of having a kid who has a high probability of being autistic? This is a juicy question. So by virtue of myself having autism, there is a higher than average chance that any children I have will also be autistic. It's genetic and it's just sort of how statistics work. I don't really want to talk about my son too much in here because I want to respect his privacy and his future privacy, but I will just say this. Uh, parenting is scary whether or not your child is autistic. Parenting is sort of like constantly realizing that you don't have a clue what you're doing and whether your child is autistic or not um, doesn't really come into that. But let's say that I had a child who was autistic or that my son would get diagnosed with autism. I think at that point you just have to really embrace what neurodiversity actually means and not just pay lip service to it. Um, because neurodiversity is uh, all very well until you're out in public and your child does something embarrassing, right? But to really commit to the idea of neurodiversity and saying, well, everyone is different and there are different ways to be and to process and to live a meaningful life. It's very important and 
your job as a parent is not to decide where your child is headed in a certain way you know it's not to mold your child into someone that you think they're going to be but actually to discover who they are and um, I guess help them get the best place possible but neurotypical or autistic I wouldn't see that would be my approach to parenting anyway I would just be that's how I view it well, I've never really understood the way that some people mourn the child that they thought they were going to get um, because there's always a chance that there could be issues with your child in a, in a variety of way and ways and you know this whole parents who get told that their child is autistic and they're being coached through the stages of grief like that's not incredibly insulting to autistic people like your child hasn't died your child is still still there and and moreover your child is still the same person that they have always been so really i guess what people in that situation are doing is just pr completely projecting who they want their child to be onto their child and not seeing who is right in front of them all they've lost by having the autism diagnosis is the fantasies about who their child is going to be and even without autism, you're never really sure that your child is going to grow up to do things like go to university, get married or all these things. There's never any um, certainty in life about that sort of thing. So, and plus having an autism diagnosis doesn't necessarily stop that. It's when doctors say things like, oh, your child is not speaking. He will never be able to have a relationship. I mean, how do you know that? They don't know that. Um, so I think there is definitely sort of a culture of fear, probably more so in the US, but probably creeping into Europe. A culture of fear about autism because disability is seen as a bad word and autism is a disability and that's a bad thing. Man, the problem is society, it's not your hypothetical autistic child. So I guess the answer is no, I'm not afraid of having an autistic child. I'm afraid of having a difficult child. <laughs> is that the same thing? <laughs> I think it would be very hard for me to have an autistic child that has a lot of very loud vocal stims. I mean, I have a toddler who... toddlers shriek a bit, don't they? But if I had a child who had... who was neurodiverse in the way that was sort of an opposite to my needs, so me being very sensitive to sound and them making a lot of noise, that would be difficult, but it wouldn't be like, aren't I afraid of having a child? No, I'm not afraid I think it would just be hard for a few years it's also I mean it's interesting nobody would ask that about any other condition or disease you know no one I used to do a gluten-free blog for many years and nobody said aren't you afraid of having a child with celiac disease and any close genetic relation of mine has a I think 10 times higher chance of getting celiac disease than the average population but nobody ever asked aren't you afraid your child will get celiac disease and I think it's probably just as bad as autism. I mean, it is limiting in a lot of different ways. So there's just way more stigma about brain stuff. Uh, the brain is mysterious and misunderstood and stigmatized. So yeah, well, I'm trying to change that here, aren't I? All right, next question. How do you tell your friends and family that you are autistic? So there's two interpretations to this question. Um, how do you in the abstract and how did you as in how did I do it? Um, I'll answer them both because I'm generous like that. Right, so the, for the first one, how do you tell your family and friends that you're autistic? There isn't really a right or a wrong way, it's based on the people and how you think they'll react. Although people do like to tell you that you're communicating wrong when you are literally trying to tell them that you think you have a communication condition. <laughs> there's a lot of tone policing that's, that's kind of irrelevant. Um, so I guess what I would say is anticipate your audience. Uh, if you know that autism is sort of a dirty word, I don't know what this is, dirty word, um, <laughs> in your family, you, you could always use the word Asperger's, I wouldn't personally, but maybe that's a little bit more socially acceptable. To, and then once you've eased them into the conversation that way, you could sort of say, well, Asperger's has been got away with and uh, now they're just calling it autism spectrum condition. So that's kind of like one way to ease somebody into it. But I sort of think it's better to take a direct approach. And I also think it's a good idea to actually be prepared to explain what autism actually is because chances are people won't know that much about it unless you have already di got diagnosed members of the family. If you're starting this conversation with your friends and family and they don't know what it is, 
you are relying on probably vague stereotypes they have in their head, like Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory, possibly, um, or Rain Man or something. I would say when you're telling them, be prepared to talk about what autism is. And you can say, oh, well, <laughs> I haven't actually prepared this. Uh, you know, it's a neurological condition. It means that I, this point, this point, this point. So this, it means I have sensory sensitivities that are hardwired in me. Um, it means that I struggle with social communication. It means that, you know, this sort of thing, you could even say when you're explaining what autism is, you could, you could sort of tailor it around the ways in which autism impacts you because if you say things that they recognize in you they'll be more likely to say oh yeah i get that you know rather than thinking of it as this scary abstract thing um if you say well you know how when i was younger i would never wear these clothes and you had to cut all the tags out and you had to line the sleeves and they will go oh yeah i remember that and you can say well it's not because i was being difficult it was because of autism um, of course, how you tell people depends on the family dynamics, whether there's a history of abuse or trauma within the family. So, you know, there are so many different ways to tell people, aren't there? But to answer how did I tell my family and friends, um, well, before I was diagnosed, I drank a bottle of wine and then cried to my parents, which I don't necessarily recommend. And I told a few, uh, I told my immediate family and my closer friends that I was sort of about to be assessed, I was on the waiting list, um, that kind of thing, so that they had some preparation because I think that's a nice way to ease people into it, isn't it? Say, oh, by the way, hey, I'm thinking about getting assessed for autism and so like I've been struggling a bit, whatever, I don't know. I can't even remember what I said, um, but you know, I've, I've been struggling a little bit and so they're going to do the assessment and this is the situation. Because then when you get your assessment and they go, oh, how did it go? You can say, yeah, I got my diagnosis. And then it's like, <laughs> you can tell people. It's not really as much of a shock. And also because waiting lists are so long, it gives you a, ch you a chance to read and digest all the information that you can about autism and, you know, maybe recommend them a book or something so they get a chance to adjust to it because it's kind of a, can be a bit of a shock to some people. Um, but I think it comes from, it sounds like, it sounds like a disorder, doesn't it? It sounds like there's a problem. And, you know, if you nudge your family to read all the books to understand you better, it might um, give them a chance to realise that they're likely autistic as well. Just kidding. For wider friends, acquaintances, people I met at a party one time ten years ago, I actually just wrote a very nice Facebook post about it. Um, and I got a lot of people telling me how brave I was, so well done me. Um, that was very nice, but somewhat irrelevant to what I felt I was saying. Um, but yeah, so I just, uh, I wrote a little thing about all, it was very nice actually. Um, I thought it was well written. <sighs> well, Storm's been no help at all so far. So, next question. Did you ever think you also have ADHD? There seems to be much overlap with executive function. Hmm. Now, I recently found some notes that I'd written from a few years ago where it actually, I think I was planning to see someone, I can't remember, um, where, I, but I'd listed all my sort of symptoms of ADHD or ADD because I thought that it sounded a lot like me. I had a friend at the time uh, who had ADD and she was describing these things and I thought, hmm, sounds familiar. Um, but the funny thing is they're all also symptoms of autism because it's all related to poor executive functioning. So it's definitely been something that I've considered over the years. I don't necessarily think I have the hyperactivity component, aside from perhaps mental hyperactivity at times. But I do recognise a lot of other traits in myself. I'm still on the waiting list for my post-autism diagnosis sort of psychological support. So um, when I finally get to see somebody, um, I will ask them about that because I don't know that it, I was assessed for it actually. And the funny thing was I did, for my autism diagnosis, I did a whole screening questionnaire which sort of ruled out psychosis and personality disorders and ruled out all these different things. But I looked back at the report and I didn't see anything ruling out ADHD. So possibly, don't know. In some ways, I feel like if I do have ADHD or ADD, I feel like my autism kind of balances it out a little bit. It sort of tugs me in the other direction. And so this is mostly when I'm well rested and not too stressed. You know, my autistic traits just 
rein it in a bit and help me focus but when I'm stressed it all kind of falls apart anyway so it's it's very difficult I think to tell and personally from my husband's ADHD diagnosis and talking to him and just talking to a lot of different people I'm not really convinced that they're separate I think they're both parts of the same thing and they just show up in people in different ways um, I think I think autism and ADHD as two separate categories are um, I think we should have another word I guess neurodiversity is the word isn't it but um, there should be another word for this sort of special brain Right, if you had a diagnosis before kids, what would you have done? If you had a diagnosis before kids, what would you have done to get ready for the overwhelm? I don't know that I would have done anything, but I think I could have gone through this whole period of post-diagnosis stuff to sort out in my head with more sleep and time for self-reflection and sort of maybe some therapy and figuring out life stuff. Uh, in the last, I guess, nine months since my official diagnosis, uh, it's been kind of a readjustment. It's taken a lot of energy and, you know, looking back and going, oh, that's why that happened, or that's why I did that, or that's how I felt that way, that's why I felt that way, or why I reacted that way. And that's kind of exhausting, especially when you have three decades of this kind of stuff to sort through. And it's been sort of like a very conscious and um, active reframing of my life, saying, well, if I can't do this and it's not because I'm lazy and it is because I'm autistic, well, what does that make me? And also then what are the strategies that I can use? Because calling yourself lazy is sort of like the easy way out, isn't it? Because, oh, well, there's nothing that can be done. It's just a moral failing, right? But if you say, well, I can't keep a schedule because I'm autistic. Then you say, okay, well, how do autistic people keep schedules then? What are the tricks? And I found that actually, rather than saying what's gonna help me, if I say, well, how would I help an autistic person do this? I can actually figure out strategies that um, work better for me. Because I think that's still part of me that's like, hasn't quite internalized the label yet. I don't know how long that will take. So anyway, this, this got way off topic about kids. Um, yeah, so basically what I'm saying is I could have done all this stuff without having the additional burden and stress of having a child and I think that would have been easier and I would have had more sleep which definitely would have been easier and I think I might have been more ready within myself to meet the demands of having a child and I being more aware about yourself can only make you a better parent I believe and obviously I would have bought more earplugs and noise cancelling headphones much sooner if I'd really known about my noise sensitivity and maybe a bigger house with an annex and a room for a nanny or something so the last question um, which is a fun personal question how did you end up in the Netherlands is your husband Dutch uh, no, he's British too. Um, so we were living in London and we were both quite miserable there. It is an expensive city to live in, it's kind of dirty and mm, parts of it are depressing, certainly the parts that we could have uh, we could afford. We both knew that we kind of liked the idea of leaving the UK and then there was one Christmas day we were stuck on the M1 in horrible traffic and so we took that opportunity to discuss our impending departure from the UK. So in the three hours that it, it took to, to get us up the M1, we basically decided that we were going to the Netherlands because we'd gone through all the countries and the Netherlands just seemed the best fit for our needs. Um, so that was in December and then we moved the following August. The Netherlands was just a really good... That's a dog. It's not a happy dog. <laughs> um, sorry, like distracted by a puppy. Maybe I do have ADHD. It was a good, uh, now I'm just reading off this. I'm trying to say it more naturally. Ah! Um, so yeah, the, uh, what am I talking about? The Netherlands, the Netherlands. Uh, it was a really good combination of job prospects for the industry that my husband was in, kind of lifestyle, way of life, general vibe, and like, you know, better meds. It's friendly. A lot of people speak English. Um, and it's actually not too far from home, so we could still visit family. It just seemed to tick all the boxes. So we moved there and we thought, well, my husband was on a six month contract. We, you know, you know the, the company was paying for the apartment. So it was like, what have we got to lose? We probably spent a few hundred on shipping the small amount of stuff that we had taking that with us. 
but really it was sort of like a what have we got to lose situation so we went over and thought if we don't like it in six months we'll go back and that was six years ago so we do like it here but probably won't stay here for the rest of my life a little bit longer definitely but certainly not I can't see myself retiring here so thank you so much for watching. I hope you like these Q&As. They are a little bit easier for me to film and um, prepare and I've got a lot on my plate at the moment but I'm really trying to keep up to the weekly schedule. So I hope you enjoy these and you will forgive me for not pumping out content and burning myself out at alarming rate. So if you're interested in any of my other videos about autism or neurodiversity, I do have a playlist and it's right over here. Uh, I also have some randomly selected video for you that's below it. If you like my content, please subscribe and uh, share this video if you think someone will be interested. And I will see you next time. Bye.